Oh, hey, didn't see you there. Welcome to, this is like a little bit wide-eyed, that's okay. Um, this is the first lecture we're going to see. This one's actually going to be a little bit longer than most of um, the ones this quarter. So I just thought that the best way for me to get you some of this information would be to talk to you. So that's what we're going to try here today. We'll see how it goes. See how it goes. It's all you can do sometimes. This lecture is all about what's going on in the north. So everything that I talk about today is what's going on in the north. So we're going to talk about greater sectional divisions, but for a few um, few weeks, we're going to kind of probably, or maybe a week or so, we're going to focus on the north rather than the south. We talked about the south a lot with slavery, and we will return there, and then we'll combine the two, which is going to lead to our civil war. That's a minor spoiler alert there. All right. So what's going on in the North this time, in the 1830s, the 1840s, the 1850s? Try not to get too excited. You're too excited already. But there's actually a revolution. I know you're thinking, isn't a revolution, isn't that like a war, isn't that fighting, isn't that political change? Well, it doesn't have to be. This one's a little bit different. They're going through something called the Industrial Revolution. It's going to change how a lot of things work. Um, so it will bring about some political changes. But mostly it's going to be economic, and it's even going to be the way that people live. If you want to know what an industrial revolution is, it's, it's kind of the process by which you go from having a society that's full of farmers and people working the land to people living in cities and people working in factories for a wage. That was kind of a new thing to the American experience at this time. So we talked about how even in the north, most people were farmers. Okay, at first they were mostly farmers, but you start getting in the, through Alexander Hamilton's plans and then through the Federalists after and then through the Whigs after that, you start to see more production, you start to see more factories spring up, and as that happens, people are going to start moving and congregating into cities. People leave the farm to move to the cities, all right, and it's important to remember even when the Civil War starts, most northerners are still small family farmers, but a lot of the people who are making the decisions, a lot of people who have the power in the north are these factory owners, the bankers that finance the factories, the merchants who trade all the goods from the factories, and it all kind of comes from this industrial revolution, all right? People are making money on top of money. Um, and this was not, America was not the first country to go through this process. It actually started in England. But we kind of actually, there's a whole fun story that we won't get into here. No fun stories in my class, I know. But uh, there was a guy who snuck to England and was, had to memorize all the plans for the factory so he could steal them and bring them back to America. And once you get there, we kind of hit the ground running. We start industrializing this industrial revolution thing with textiles. So making clothes, making cloth. And before you start thinking that when we're talking about sectionalism, the two parts of the country have to be totally separate, you have to remember that all of this industrialization, all of these textiles, a lot of it's based on southern cotton. So there is actually some interplay between the two halves of the country, even if people don't necessarily think of it that way. Um, the Industrial Revolution is going to change how people live, more factories, more towns. Like I said, that would be the biggest thing that you would kind of notice about it. We live in an industrial society now. That's why we kind of live in cities and suburbs and things like that, rather than everyone living on the farm. It's even going to change how people get around. Before this, you could go by boat or you could go by uh, horse and buggy or horse or whatever, but this is where we start getting railroads. So people are going to be more connected. They're going to move uh, farther, faster. And it's going to really help the North a lot when we get to the Civil War because they're going to have so much more railroad. And that was all linked to this Industrial Revolution, which means that they can get people places and goods places a lot faster than people in the, or than the armies in the South can. And even when you talk about communication, you get things like the telegraph, which allows near instantaneous um, communication between places. It runs on wires that look kind of like telephone wires, but uh, operates a little bit differently. So as far as if you were a person living during this time, you may or may not really be enjoying the Industrial Revolution. A lot of people made a lot of money. and were living really ostentatious lifestyles. Uh, but for a lot of people, this was a harsh system. There was no such thing as a minimum wage. There was no such thing 
as an eight hour workday. So their schedule is generally six days a week, about 12 or more hours a day. And they were making cents, not dollars, cents. Um, really just enough to pay for rent and food and that's like it. So your position as an industrial wage worker is not necessarily good. There's no such thing as child labor laws at this time. So a lot of kids when they're 12, 13, they just get sent right to the factory, if not younger. And it's great. It's great to have uh, kids working in your factory because you actually get to pay them even less. So that's pretty sweet. Um, as far as what else is going on in the country, that's kind of what life looks like. But who, who's kind of working in these factories and what other factors are really shaking up America? Well, immigration, believe it or not, is a factor that we still talk about today as a big issue in America. And back then, it wasn't any different. It's uh, kind of crazy how some of our national conversations are the same. But America actually was going through a huge boom in immigration at the same time, mostly from Irish and from German or Ireland and Germany, excuse me. So basically, most of the folks from Ireland were fleeing a famine. There wasn't enough food to eat. There's a whole story behind that in the 1840s. Um, and there's a ton of Irish uh, background and lineage in America now because of this. And those are a lot of your kind of wage workers in these factories or at docks. They generally stayed in cities and stayed in the East. The other group of people that is all coming, uh, that is coming over from Europe at this time are the Germans. And they were fleeing a lot of kind of um, discontent and a lot of issues going on in Germany at the time. They actually spread out across the country and they would add to the ranks of a lot of those small uh, land holding farmers. They wanted to go own land and farm. So that's a little bit different. There was a lot of prejudice against these groups though, um, for a lot of different reasons, just kind of cultural difference of people who were kind of coming over here and were poor. People didn't necessarily like that. And also religious prejudice was a big part. Um, folks, especially from Ireland, were Catholic. And it was believed that if you were Catholic, you couldn't really participate in a democracy. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but that's what they kind of believed. There was actually a whole political party called the Know Nothing Party that was based entirely on kind of the thought that America should be um, based more on English people and the English system and on Protestantism over Catholicism. And they didn't want any more immigrants coming to America. And they did pretty well in the 1850s before kind of being gobbled up by other parties. But it is a pretty interesting time in American history. So what's all this mean? Because I've talked about three things. There's three things. I'll put this on a PowerPoint, PowerPoint that you will uh, have access to as well, which is going to be basically you have industrialization, more factories, urbanization, more cities, and immigration. We got more people from different places all kind of living together. And all three of those things kind of are linked and they go together. Um, so what this means is in the North, things are changing incredibly fast. If you were somebody who was born in like, I don't know, 1800, 1810, 1820, by the time you are an adult in the 1830s and 40s, your life and things have changed very rapidly. That has a big effect on the society. We're going through it now in our own way, too, where rapid change brings about a lot of kind of disruption and a lot of issues can kind of come up. And what you have here in the North at this time and how that's going to show itself, all that change, right? Everyone's moving closer together into cities where you kind of know your neighbor's business, where you see a lot of the worst parts of society laid bare and exposed is we're going to have a lot of reform movements, a lot of people who have an idea that they can make society better, they can make our country better, and they're going to really um, lean into that. And that's more what we're going to talk about next. So this will probably be one of the longer videos that I'll make. So if you're sitting here bored still, don't worry about that, because um, most of them will probably be a little bit quicker than this. But basically, big things to remember, in the North, it's all about change. Things are changing. Things are getting more condensed, they're getting more urban, we got cities, we got factories, and those are the people in charge. People making the decisions are the people kind of running the factories. So until next time, I hope you guys take it easy. I hope you stay safe out there, because I know I am, and you know, just doing our best to learn out here. So good luck.